Welcome to the next video in our series explaining how to build your own quadcopter drone. Today we will explore how to combine the accelerometer and barometer measurements with a two-dimensional Kalman filter. In part 17 we integrated the BMP280 barometric sensor on our quadcopter frame. During testing, however, the sensor reacted very slowly to movements and the resulting altitude readings were not very accurate when the sensor was stationary. In the previous video, we tried to measure the vertical velocity with the MPU6050 accelerometer. This sensor reacts fast to movements, but the ever-increasing integration error means that the results are not useful for our application. Let's find out how a two-dimensional Kalman filter can help us combining both measurements. In this case, the state of our system consists of both the vertical velocity and the altitude. Put both variables in the state vector S. From part 18, we learned how to calculate the vertical velocity from the integration of the acceleration in the inertial z direction using the MPU6050. Integrating this equation a second time gives you the actual altitude. Let's rewrite both equations in a more structured way using a state space matrix form. These vectors and matrices consist of nothing more than the two equations but will allow us to develop our Kalman filter further. From part 15, you probably remember that a Kalman filter requires you to first predict the current state of the system. This is done using our state space matrix. We have the state vector containing the velocity and altitude, the state transformation matrix, a control matrix, and the input variable, which is measured by the MPU6050. Because both the altitude and the vertical velocity at startup are equal to zero, the initial prediction for the state vector S is set to zero as well. Now you need to calculate the uncertainty of the prediction. Matrix P is also set to zero at startup because the initial prediction for the state vector S is 100% correct as both the altitude and the vertical velocity are perfectly known. To be able to calculate the prediction uncertainty, you still need the process uncertainty Q. Let's take a standard deviation of 10 cm per square second on the accelerometer values. Multiply the square of the standard deviation with the square of the control matrix G to get Q, which is essentially the variance of the process uncertainty. Now we need to calculate the Kalman gain itself. To be able to do this, you need the observation matrix H, which links the state with the measurement. The measurement in this case is the altitude that we get from the barometric sensor. By rewriting the difference between the barometric altitude and the Kalman altitude in a more general matrix and vector form, we see that the observation matrix consists of only 1 and 0. R is the uncertainty on the barometer altitude measurement. Let's assume a standard deviation on this measurement of 30 cm. Now you have all the information to update the predicted state of the system with the measurement of the altitude. Last but not least, update the uncertainty of the predicted state before starting a new iteration. Because the state vector consists of two variables, we call this a two-dimensional Kalman filter. Before we can start coding in Arduino, we need to connect both the MPU6050 and the BMP280 to our TNC. The connections stay the same as seen in parts 4 and 17. Both sensors can be connected using the same SCL and SDA wires because they have a separate I2C address. Remember that the BMP280 is not 5V tolerant and thus needs to be fed from the 3V output of your TNC. Connecting both sensors to your TNC is rather straightforward, but keep attention because you need to do a lot of wiring, so it's easy to make mistakes. Accidentally connecting the BMP280 to the 5V output of your TC is likely to destroy the sensor, so watch out. Now start coding in Arduino by including the variables necessary for reading the MPU6050 and the BMP280 sensors. For the two-dimensional Kalman filter, we will use a dedicated Arduino library 
to be able to calculate with vectors and matrices. The basic linear algebra library. This is not a standard library, so when you compile the code, you will get an error if you didn't install it first. This means you need to import it by clicking on the sketch, going to include library, and choosing the manage libraries option. Type basic linear algebra in the search bar of the library manager and install the library that was coded by Tom Stewart. It will take a couple of seconds to download. When successful, you will notice that the words installed are written above the text. When compiling the sketch after installation, you should not get an error anymore. Now continue by defining the Kalman altitude and vertical velocity. Subsequently, you need to define all matrices necessary for the Kalman filter, together with their size. The state space vector S, for example, is a 2x1 matrix, while the unity matrix I is a 2x2 two two matrix. Continue by constructing the function that will hold the two-dimensional Kalman filter, with the help of the five Kalman equations seen earlier. To extract the altitude and vertical velocity from the state space vector S, remember that the altitude holds position 0, 0 in the basic linear algebra syntax and the vertical velocity holds position 1, 0. Next, write a function that will extract the altitude from the barometer as explained in part 17. Remember that the majority of the equations in this function are given by the manufacturer. Go on with a function that extracts the gyro and accelerometer values from the MPU 6050. And do not forget to put your own accelerometer calibration values highlighted in yellow as seen in part 14. The setup part of the Arduino code is used to set up the connection with both the MPU 6050 and the BMP 280 sensors, which was explained in parts 4 and 17. The setup of the BMP 280 takes most lines of code as you need to import the sensor calibration parameters. Next, you need to initialize all matrices and vectors that were defined for the Kalman filter. The initialization values were explained in the first part of this video and are summarized next to the five equations for the filter. The state transition matrix F, for example, is populated by 1, TS, 0 and 1 where Ts is equal to 4 milliseconds or the time of one loop iteration. All other matrices are populated in the same way, as you can see with the control matrix G. End the setup part by starting the timer that will keep track of the iteration time for each loop. Continue now with the loop part, where you first call the function that extracts the data from the MPU 6050 and calculates the acceleration in the inertial z direction. Through the function barometer signals, the altitude value is extracted and calibrated such that it is equal to zero at startup. Start the two-dimensional common filter calculations with the last line. Print both the calculated altitude and vertical velocity through the common filter and end the code by waiting until 4 milliseconds or 4000 microseconds have passed. Now upload the code to your TNC and open the serial plotter. The green line represents the common altitude and the blue line gives the vertical velocity. As you can see, both lines behave very smooth and are relatively stable, making them useful for a flight controller. However, the results are not totally accurate and can vary a lot even when the sensor is lying flat on the table. This is due to the inherent limitations of both sensors, so it remains to be seen how performant our flight controller will be. Let's finish this video by looking at the Kalman gain. In this case, we have two Kalman gains, because our state space vector consists of both the altitude and the velocity. For both variables, the Kalman gain lies very close to zero. This means physically that the Kalman filter relies heavily on the accelerometer integration and less on the barometer measurements. In the next video, we will construct a flight controller that enables you to control the vertical velocity and hence the altitude of your quadcopter drone. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the series. And remember that you can find all tutorials on YouTube and the full code on GitHub. 
The manual, which contains all explications, is available as well on GitHub if you need some more information. Thanks for watching and see you next time.